Well, while hope in the form of a coronavirus vaccine is being restored for millions of us across the world, one of the pandemic's most fundamental questions remains unanswered. Where did this virus come from and how did it come to infect humans? It is the question that investigators are hoping to answer. Well, let's speak to Professor Edward Holmes, an evolutionary biologist and virologist at the University of Sydney. So will we ever get the answer? Uh, good morning. I think we'll get close to an answer. Whether we will ever find exactly the reservoir species is a little bit um, open to debate. Uh, it, it's At the moment, there's a, there's a large push going on in China to try and sample animals to see which one may have a virus that's very close to, to, to the, the one that's affected humans. But it's really needle and haystack stuff. It may mean looking in the, you know, the right the right cave, even the right time, the right animal. So um, it's going to be tough. Uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get there. But people do need to be a, a bit patient about this, I think. So can you categorically say it was either a bat or a pangolin or, or is, there, is there other are there other possibilities? Um, I at the moment, I think there are there are many possible routes uh, for how the virus got in humans. We, we know that bats are a very good reservoir for coronaviruses. They, they contain a lot of them. And my own work has, has discovered a number of them. Pangolins were a very strange discovery. And quite what role pangolins play in this is really not quite sh um, clear yet. My, my strong bet would be that there'll, there'll be other animals we, we have that will carry these coronaviruses and some could be very close to, to, to SARS-CoV-2. Um, that will just require more investigation. So at the moment, I don't think we can really say exactly what happened and what it came from. I think bats must be in the mix somewhere. Pangolins maybe less so. And we, we just need to sample more animals. And when you, you talk about sampling animals, um, how, how easy is that? I suppose it's a, you say, needle in a haystack. Um, how much cooperation are you getting from the international community? And ultimately, is, is China helping you? And do we know categorically that Wuhan was the, was the, was the place where it originated? Uh, yeah, so, so at the moment, the China, I think the Chinese authorities are, are, I think they're doing a lot of sampling. I'm not, I'm not actually involved in that process, um, so I can't directly comment. But I do, I do know I have collaborators there, and I believe they are doing a lot of work at the moment. Um, is did Wuhan is the is that the place where it first emerged? I think that's actually questionable. Certainly, Wuhan was where we first detected it. But Wuhan may be one of these famous kind of super spreading events. So the virus emerged somewhere else, was brought into Wuhan, maybe on a, a wildlife trafficked animal or, or a, a farmed animal, and then it may have exploded in Wuhan. And that Obviously, if it's not actually from Wuhan, but a, di a different place in, in, in China, that's going to make detecting the origin that bit harder. So it is going to be a tough process. But um, I have confidence that my colleagues in China and, and the WHO team that's now going to um, investigate this will, will do a good job. Do you need the origins in order to prevent something like this? We're seeing these vaccines being rolled out at record breaking speed. Is, is the actual origin really important or can, can we prevent this virus, uh, other forms of it in the future? Um, I think it's hugely important. So the vaccines we've got at the moment, I mean, they've taken amazingly only less than a year to develop. But that has been a year and that, that year obviously has completely turned the world upside down. And for the future, we need to try and best try and prevent these things happening again. And one of the key steps in prevention is trying to find out exactly how this virus has gone from an animal into a human. So, for example, let's say it's the fur farming trade, which we know goes on. If that's the route, if we can find a fur farmed animal that is the origin, and we know that's how it got into humans, then, then we need to kind of regulate that industry better, control it to stop it happening again. So the origins is critical to help prevent the next pandemic. And be sure we will get more pandemics. And I think they'll happen with increasing frequency. So I think the origins is a, is a hugely important part of that. Professor Holmes, you've left me with more questions than answered now. I'm, oh, thank you so much for so your time. <laughs> no, it's been fascinating to speak to you. Thank you so much.